Hey guys, Wiljam here, and today I'm bringing you something a little bit different. Now I've been playing predominantly solo Rust for over four years now, in which time I have been building up my experience and knowledge of solo playstyle with every wipe. And if there's one thing I've learned, and I can't stress this enough, is that you do not have to be good at PvP to be a successful solo. The advice I'm going to give you in this video will allow you to, without fail, have a rewarding wipe. And so to all of you watching this, whether a PvP chad or a console player waiting patiently for Rust's release, I really hope this video gives you a completely new outlook on solo life, and maybe even encourages you to try out being a solo. And before we go any further in the video, I have some important news. As you can imagine, with my growth on YouTube, I've been approached by a lot of sponsorship opportunities. But you may also have noticed that I've never actually had a sponsor on my channel. And this is because it's my view that I will only ever promote something that I genuinely enjoy. And so today I couldn't be happier than to be sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Now I've actually been playing this game for well over a year now, and as you can see my account's quite a high level. I love games that involve progression and ranking, and I think what got me so into Raid was the whole champion system, ranking the heroes up, allowing you to compete with other players at higher and higher ranks the more you play. The gameplay itself is fast and simple to learn, and the stunning graphics that go with it make it a really enjoyable experience. Another fantastic thing about Raid is the incredibly active developers. In fact, September brings another huge update to the game, tweaking and rebalancing over 20 different champions to make PvP arena battles even more competitive. And if that's not enough, the Forge also just came out, so now you can save time and start crafting top quality artifacts and competing right away. If you haven't already given Raid a go, I'd highly recommend it. It's free to play on both mobile and PC, and if you download the game in the next 30 days using my links, and you're a new player, you'll be rewarded with 100,000 silver, 50 gems, 10 shards, and a fantastic champion, the Slasher, a hero who dominates in the earlier levels, and will help you get the boost you need as you start out. And with all that said, it's time to move on with the video. Almost all of my experience has been on official servers without group limits. Seeing as this is the most difficult environment a solo can play in, Hopefully that means my advice should be helpful for any server you wish to main. I would also like to say that there is no one way to play solo, and that to be consistently successful, especially without strong mechanical aim, you're going to need to put the hours in. The first thing I'm going to talk about is probably the single most important factor of a successful wipe. I see countless people get this wrong, and then wonder why their wipes always come to a halt while playing solo. And that simple thing is base location. If you're unsure why this is so important, then let me give you a little scenario. You're playing solo and you're doing okay. You spawned in, made a couple of plays, and slapped down a 2x1. Things are looking good. That is, until you try progressing further in the game. Because you can't. No matter what you do or where you go, you're constantly grubbed by an endless army of nakeds and tier 1 players, always shooting you in the back while looting or farming or PvPing. And you find yourself in an endless cycle of either killing or being killed by bows and crossbows and never seeing more than a revolver. And so after a few hours you log off, angry because there's always one more. Well, if that sounds familiar, then the main reason your wipes haven't been working is your base location. So now you may be wondering, how do I choose the right base location? To answer this, we're going to first look at where not to build. In most servers, all naked spawn on the beach. But these spawns aren't random, as there are actually only a limited amount of these areas around the map. These spawn locations change from server to server, but are easy to spot as they are almost always in grass biomes, and often near lighthouses and harbours. The reason why this is important is because you should never build anywhere near these spawns. In fact, you want to go as far away as possible, as building near these fresh spawns brings nothing but the constant pain of dealing with endless nakeds and primitive players halting your progression. Now this may come as a surprise to you, but the other place you want to avoid are roads, the reason being, if you build too near a road, you have the constant traffic of all tier players running past and around your base throughout wipe. Another area that should always be avoided are forests. Now this may come as another surprise, but believe it or not as a solo, too much cover is not your friend, and being surrounded by trees and bushes gives so much opportunity to grubs and door campers. And so now that we've talked about where to avoid, what does that actually leave us with? And this is where we come to possibly the most important advice. If nothing else, when you leave this video, take one thing with you, and that's this, snow. Snow biomes in Rust are so incredibly powerful for a solo player, and let me explain why. For starters, there are no spawn points in the snow, so no nakeds to deal with. Snow is cold, and so the majority of primitive players avoid it, and tier 3 players avoid wearing road sign or metal armor, making them more vulnerable. 
Nodes are endless and always at your doorstep. With a jackhammer, a five minute farming run can leave you with an inventory of resources without going further than a square from your base. If there's no road, the only people you ever encounter near your base will be other farmers, and as a solo player, farmers are easy pickings. Even duos can be easily ousted by a solo if they are caught off guard farming. The snow is nice and open, giving you visibility for miles. This allows you to spot other players, especially campers, along with enemy bases that may pop up. However, it's not as simple as just looking for a snowy area and moving in. The other main factor when choosing base location is the monuments. The key for fast progression is monument puzzles. And if you've ever seen my solo series, you'll know that I will normally reach a tier 2 workbench within the first couple hours of wipe, and this is purely down to key card puzzles. You'll need to be near at least one green card monument and one blue card monument in order to properly maximise your efficiency. The best green card monument for loot is 100% the sewer branch, however it tends to also be the most busy, and very often will always be looted or have lots of players around it, especially during wipe day and so may not be the best monument to search for when deciding location. For this reason, I would suggest looking for either satellite dish or harbour, both of which can often be found in the snow. These tend to be far less active than sewer branch, and while don't provide as much loot, do give you that all-important blue card. So now we come on to the blue card monuments. For me, either airfield or water treatment are the best two monuments. A quick blue card run can earn you over 250 scrap. Just two successful runs, and you already have a tier 2 workbench. The last main thing to think about in terms of location is what are your options. You must leave yourself with more than one direction to travel in from your base. If you choose an isolated location in a far corner, there is only one direction you can travel. And if there happens to be a group or a couple of players that either live in that direction or constantly roam the area, you'll never be able to progress and you'll be constantly pinned. And so aim to always have multiple options. This might mean choosing a location that's between two different monuments, so that if one happens to be held down by a large group or a better player, you can simply go to the other monument for your farm. And so back to our original question of where to build. In the snow, not too close to a road, near a green and blue card monument, and with multiple directions to travel. If all of those factors are checked, then you already have a good chance of having a successful wipe. Now that we have the location sorted, it's time to work on actually setting up your base. For starters, as a solo it is so important that you have a solid base design if you want any chances of surviving a full wipe. There are plenty of good builds that can be found on YouTube from channels such as Evil Worst, Red Apple and myself. Without a base capable of tanking at least 23 or more rockets, you'll be vulnerable to just casual roam raiders. If you annoy the wrong people in a wipe, sometimes getting raided is inevitable, but by going for the strongest base possible, you maximise your chances of surviving and you'll most likely only be vulnerable to a select few on the server with enough explosives. I'm a player who always joins a server fresh wipe, minutes after a reset, and so let's talk about the most successful way to start off. The key for a quick and efficient start is to ignore other players. I see countless people chasing down other nakeds with rocks and spears minutes into wipe. All this does is waste valuable time when you could be setting up a base. The second you load into the server, Check your map, as discussed earlier. Find that perfect location and book it. Don't stop running until you get to the area you plan on building. The only things you should be collecting are hemp bushes along the way, along with any toolboxes and crates you may encounter. Only once you've reached your destination should you start to farm. Many people craft spears at the start. I would argue that they are almost completely pointless. A simple stone hatchet or pickaxe will give you both basic protection against other players who may have it out for you, along with being able to collect resources. So always start with a hatchet, knock down a couple of trees, and as soon as you have the wood, start crafting a building plan, hammer, door and a key lock, all while continuing to farm trees and stone nodes. If done correctly, your crafting queue should be finished around the same time that you have enough resources to fully complete your starter base. This is another very important point. Only start building your base if you have enough resources to completely seal it. So, now you've got your starter base, it's time to focus on some goals. A bag is of course a must, along with a furnace. If you haven't already collected the animal fat, one of your first tasks after securing your base should be getting a furnace down. It's vital that throughout wipe day you have a constant flow of metal fragments cooking. Once again, ignore other players that may be nearby. Only fight if they engage with you, and focus on finding animals or red barrels. Once your furnace is down and you have it filled up with wood and metal ore, you're off to a good start. From here, your main priority is going to be getting a workbench, both tier 1 and 2. This is where the grind begins. 
hit up those monuments, hitting every barrel, killing every scientist, and searching every room for crates, keycards, fuses, and recyclables. Don't get too greedy. Remember to collect yourself back in base every 10 to 15 minutes to deposit loot, reducing the risk of losing too much at once if you happen to get jumped. Something I want to talk about now is very important, and that's your mindset while playing. It is so important that every time you leave your base, you have a clear goal in mind of what you're trying to achieve. If you need wood, farm some wood and return home. If you need stone or metal, head out with just a weapon and a pickaxe, farm your nodes and get back home. The second you start aimlessly running around the map waiting for something to happen to you, such as looking for the perfect snowball play, is when you will consistently be killed. So remember, always have a clear goal of what you are trying to achieve in your run and make it happen. As a solo, particularly on wipe day, you should rarely be leaving your base just to PvP. Encounters with other players will happen naturally, but by just going for your own tasks, it reduces the risk of running into too many people. When I play solo, you may have noticed that the majority of fights that happen are when players engage me. It is not until later on in wipe, when I am specifically after certain weapons or raids, that I will actively hunt down other players and groups. A really strong bit of advice that I have is that if you die, farm back what you lost. I see many players fall down the rabbit hole of dying, re-kitting, dying, re-kitting, etc. until every single weapon or resource is gone from their base. This is why sometimes, when you die and you're frustrated, the key is just to sit back and farm. Hit some trees, hit some nodes, farm some barrels. Don't be afraid to take breaks. Sometimes you will be frustrated after unfortunate deaths, but that's just the nature of the game. And if you do feel frustrated, don't angrily get geared with your last set of loot in the hopes of making a play, grab a drink, cool off, get back on, and do a bit of farming. Having a good mentality is vital to enjoying this game as a solo. Don't allow yourself to get too attached to your loop. At the end of the day, you're here for the challenge and the experience. So, you've got a base. You've possibly got a tier 2 from the scrap farming. But now, let's talk about blueprints. For a solo, a couple of blueprints are key. Double barrel and the revolver. With these, you can kill just about any player on the server with the right timing and positioning. Luckily, these blueprints can be found in crates all over the map and are also relatively easy to get from other players. If your PvP isn't too strong, a great setup will be running a crossbow with a nail gun. A crossbow bolt to the chest, followed by a few nails, will quickly down any primitive player, and taking on revolvers becomes a lot easier. So getting your hands on a tier 1 weapon shouldn't be too much of a struggle. Tier 2 weapons may be a little more tricky. For someone with strong mechanical aim, it may not take you long at all to progress from a revolver to a semi-auto rifle or a P250. However, if you're someone who struggles, your best bet may just be constantly hitting the blue card monuments. With enough runs, it's relatively simple to find at least one tier 2 weapon blueprint in a military crate. However, you may not be that fortunate, and may have to resort to PvP to get your tier 2 guns. If that's the case, then I do have a few tips to maximise your chances. As a solo, constant surveillance is critical. You should always be using your alt key to scan the area in all directions. You never know when someone may pop up to ambush you. This is even more important when engaging in fights. Before you actually take on an enemy, make sure there is no one else around you who could be a threat. If there is, simply back off a bit and wait it out. A very easy way to progress is by cleaning up the aftermath of fights. If you see multiple players in an engagement, let them fight it out. Give them time to do as much damage to each other as possible, making life even easier for you. When fighting anyone, whether it be a solo or a larger group, an incredibly powerful tool you have is the crouch button. Crouching is completely silent, and very often, dipping behind cover, crouching around to reposition silently, and re-peeking from a completely different spot can win battles. As a solo, it's important to keep the element of surprise, as very often that's the only way you can take on multiple enemies at once. Now let's talk about loosing. You need to become completely familiar with your UI and ensure you have hotkeys bound for fast looting. This includes the hover key. As very often you are under a lot of time pressure while looting, it's always better to take less loot and survive than to try and take too much and end up dying to a grub. This is why you must very often settle for less. If you kill two players, grab the most valuable loot from each one and get out of there. Don't spend too long sourcing your inventory trying to maximise the items you can pick up. Now I'm going to talk about the final stages of a Rust Wipe, the end game. As a solo, you won't always reach this stage. No matter how successful your wipe is, reaching end game loot is often situational, and there's no one trick to help you get there. Very often, it will come down to luck. 
and whether you can pull off that play when it really counts. To maximize your chances of getting the top tier blueprints, I found that military tunnels and cargo ship are the most accessible locations for a solo. Oil rigs are often camped by larger groups and your chances on a fresh wipe server of doing a successful rig run as a solo are very slim. Once again though, patience is key. Whatever your intentions are in the wipe, as a solo it will very often take more than one attempt. You have to learn to pick yourself up and get back out there. The final point I want to make is that when playing Rust as a solo, having the right mindset is necessary to succeed. Something you learn purely from experience in the game is the ability to accept losses and move on. So many people ask me how I don't just rage quit and leave all the time. And this ability to not get angry is no superpower. It simply comes down to me being able to detach myself from the game. And what I mean by this is you need to learn to not get possessive of the items you own. Of course, losing loot and getting raided is always going to be frustrating. But as soon as you allow losing in-game loot to affect your mental state outside of Rust, then this is when you start to fail within the game. Each loss will hit harder and harder, eventually causing you to rage. This is also what creates toxic players within Rust, as they find themselves so angry both at the game and at other players for taking away their virtual items, that they just take it out on players around them, creating a toxic cycle. Unfortunately, there's no key secret for just letting go of your frustrations within Rust. What certainly helped me was just lots of experience getting beat down as a solo. The more I lost, the less it affected me, allowing me to just enjoy the game and actually have a relaxing time while I play it. And that's all I have for you guys today. Now, hopefully you found this guide different to some others that you may have seen. This isn't 10 quick tips to make you better at solo. This is a mentality and a strategy of how to tackle a solo wipe, rather than particular hints that might make you a bit better. If any of you decide to take on this playstyle, I'd love to hear how it goes in the comments, as I really do think there should be more solos playing Rust. It's a very underrated way of playing, and I actually find it far more enjoyable than playing in much larger groups. With all that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Wiljam, out.